I have a lot of joy about today's podcast and a little bit of fear because Glenn and Phyllis are not joining us today. But today I have the one and only incredible Wes Wages, my husband, love of my life. And I have a couple of podcasts that I'm wanting to record with him. But today we are going to be diving into a conversation that we had two nights ago that almost turned into like a tense moment between us, which is very rare. And you guessed it. It's about sex. (laughs) Whenever I jump on the podcast, it's always about sex here. Always about sex. Yeah. And this is this is like real and raw conversation that we had. That's where we're going today. <laughs> Let's dive. Like a li- there's a little uncomfortability. I got to do the intro, you know I mean? bud. Oh, sorry. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Welcome to the Connection Codes podcast. This is the podcast where we break open the emotions that take us from being disconnected to connected in our relationships and in ourselves. I am your host and joining me is Wes Wages, video producer and soon to be commercial airline pilot, my husband. And we are sharing the Connection Codes founded by Dr. Glenn and Phyllis Hill. That's the guide to human connection. And we're so glad you're here. I know I skinned up my leg. So sorry. I just saw a bruise on your leg. I was like, what happened? Yeah. So thank you for pointing out. I have a large bruise on my leg from Sky Zone the other day with our children. (laughs) Um, We decided to jump with them. It was a great opportunity, a great day. Yeah. Uh, thanks for joining me, bud. You're welcome. Yeah, we are on our couch today. If you're watching on YouTube, decided to spice things up. So... We're going to call these couch comments. You know, I love that language. Yeah, spice things up, which brings us to where we are starting. Yeah, uh, I'll immediately start with a little shame that every time I come on here, we're talking about sex. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> what, what's happening for you there? Uh, well, it's just like, oh, Wes wants it a lot. And Tira's like, I don't really know. I'm not really sure if I'm down with all that. And so... And people relate to that. (laughs) It's Yes, I do know now later in life that this is uh, not a new conversation for most marriages. Yes. Well, actually, what's I think kind of crazy is it is still a new conversation for most marriages. I don't think it's a new problem, though. Mm. I think the problem has been there for a long time, but we didn't have conversations around it. So people felt really lonely in their experience or it caused a lot of conflict where maybe they weren't even fighting about sex. They're fighting about all of these other things. Yeah. But sex may be a big underlying issue. Yeah. So thank you for being willing to come on and be vulnerable with us. The other podcasts I want you to do with me are not about sex, though. So okay. you can be excited yeah. about those. Well, I'm excited about this one, too. <laughs> okay. Wes is like, any chance that I have to talk about sex is a great moment. Yeah. Which kind of brings us to what was happening for us Two nights ago, we do nightly walks with each other, um, which is our time to connect and chat, catch up, dive into different things going on. And we disagree on this fact, but in my experience, almost every conversation on our nightly walk somehow does lead to sex. I totally disagree. Wes disagrees with that. (laughs) It may only be for like a few minutes, but we always talk about sex. On the walk. Yeah, still disagree. Well, so on this specific walk, you suggested at the beginning, hey, why don't we start with the core motion wheel? And we actually, like, I'm very proud of us. We did the wheel correctly. If this is your first time listening, the core motion wheel is the four minute tool that Dr. Glenn and Phyllis created that helps you learn how to identify the emotions that are happening in your body and process them out so you can use them to connect. And the goal of it is, one, to identify what's happening, but to do it in four minutes. If you are a listener and you are doing the core motion wheel with your partner and you're not doing it in four minutes, they would say you're not doing the core motion wheel. And so on this night, we did the core motion wheel, but then there was something in the wheel that was triggering, not triggering even necessarily, but something you wanted to dive deeper into, which was your shame around sex. Yeah. And so after we completed the wheel, you were like, hey, let's talk about this. 
some mm-hmm. more, yeah. which is exactly what you're supposed to do. So when you're doing it, if there's something you want to dive deeper into, wait until you're both done and then go deeper. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great way to process emotions and kind of know where we ch- we can co-regulate and know where each other are. But of course, there are times in a marriage where you're like, hey, I need to dive a little bit deeper than like this, like four minutes, you know? Totally. We were thankfully having sex and it was connected, but also felt a lot of loneliness. Like basically like, I have to ask your permission there. Are you ready to have this? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel a lot of times like you control like when we have sex because it's all depending on like how you're feeling. Yeah. Because I'm down. You know what I mean? You're like, I'm down any day, any time. Yeah. And so then I feel some guilt because, well, it's like, can we have sex? You know what I mean? And when you say no, I'm okay with that. But it does hurt a little bit. So then the more rejection and more rejection, I just don't want to ask. I'm just kind of like suggest, you know what I mean? And so just, hey, are you ready? Like what's happening? You know? Yeah. So can we give a little backstory about our sexual journey for those that have not listened to our previous podcast together? Sure. So we have been married now for 16 years. We just celebrated our 16th wedding anniversary. Hallelujah. And the first 12 years of our marriage, pre-connection codes, we struggled with both emotional connection and sexual connection connection and we were like bff we really really liked each other and if you had asked us with the exception of a couple of years there in the middle we would have been like our marriage is great like Mm -hmm. we were an example couple a great couple and, and we were by society standards but our sexual connection was that i was just showing up for you it was not a desire. It was not a pursuit. I essentially mentally disengaged. Like Dr. Glenn says, it was just slot A and slot B. Yes. It was like... I was disassociating. Yeah. The majority of the time because I was in those early mom years, it completely exhausted. Validated. Yeah. As well as just balancing my own shame and fear around sex that I didn't know how to process or what to do with. So those first 12 years, we created a lot of damage and a lot of trauma for both of us. And that trauma is that you feel like you aren't desired. Mm -hmm. And then our conversations around sex were that I wasn't who you wanted me to be. Valid. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I was disengaging, of course, but my perspective was I'm showing up like I am doing this for you. A lot of wives aren't even doing that. You should be grateful. Mm. And that was my perspective. Yeah. And so now since going through the foundations course in 2020 and late night in 2020, that was four years ago, almost four years ago for late night, not one single time in the last four years have we had disconnected sex. Yeah, I've been engaged. I have been present. And it has really, really changed everything for us. But that still doesn't mean I'm wanting to have sex <laughs> four to five times a week. I would be amazing for one night a week. If we could do one night a week, that would be a dream world scenario for me. Mm -hmm. But that is not your case. And that's fine. But I'm game on that. Are you? Yeah. I don't believe you. I love you, but I don't believe you. Because the pain that we are experiencing, and we're just going to be super raw with y'all because we know that we're not the only ones that experience this. Yeah. I guess our walk was on Saturday night when this conversation came up and we had sex on Friday night. So for me as a wife, it was super, super painful that now we're on this walk together and you're bringing up sex in a negative way the day after we had sex. But here's the deal. Just because we had sex doesn't negate what I'm feeling. Valid. But then you saying you'd be okay with one night a week. I'm like, ah, that doesn't feel accurate if we just had sex and now it feels like there's a complaint about it. You know what I'm saying? But it's not a complaint. Yeah. It was just what I'm feeling. Okay. There's an emotion. There emotion. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where our past trauma comes up. Yeah. 
that's where all of those years of damage that we build on each other can sneak back in. Because I genuinely feel like today, the way we operate, we are not creating anything that 10 years from now we're going to fight over. Mm. I yeah. really don't. I think all of our fights, the majority of our fights are all things that happened in the first 12 years that we were married. Do you agree with that? Yeah, we're just kind of like working through that. Well, when those things come up, yeah. when a conversation triggers that old pain. So like on Saturday night when we're on a walk and you're like, hey, sex isn't enough for me right now. That's what I heard you saying. Mm, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I know. I know. I know. I said that. That's not what came out of your mouth verbally, but that was what I experienced you saying. That is the 12 years of hearing whatever you're doing is not enough for me. Yeah, it, it, it was hard to bring up. And I've actually wanted to bring it up for a while, but like, I'm just waiting for the moment because if I ever bring up sex in a way that's like, hey, can we talk more about this? It's immediately a negative thing for you. Yeah. And so part of me is just like, well, I'm just not going to bring it up. Yeah. Because we're going to fight and I just can't share my feelings with you. And I just don't want you to feel like I legitimately don't want you to feel like there's a problem with it because I'm so thankful for you showing up for me. But whenever I do bring it up, you will always jump to, well, he's not happy. He's negative. He wants too much. Because that's my past trauma. Totally. And yeah. that's valid. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's hard for me to bring up. I, I don't know when the right time is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I hear that. My issue was what we discussed the other night. Well, first, before I got dive into that, I want to say here as like a 13 minutes in kind of plug moment of uh, the longer you are putting off doing this work with your partner, the more damage you are creating that 10 years from now, you're going to be going back to that moment. Yeah. And so unfortunately for couples that have been married 30, 40 years, there is plenty of hope for you. Dr. Glenn and Phyllis are examples of that. They were married 30 years before they began this work. And living life as closely with them as I do, I can say I witnessed the things that triggered them into conflict are all things from the first 30 years of their marriage. So the longer you wait, the more damage you have. If you are early on in your marriage, especially do this work now. Don't wait until you are in pain. Don't wait until you are on the brink of divorce. Like, do not put it off because you are creating damage today that, again, 10 years from now is going to be the thing that you're going to be fighting over your spouse about when you're trying to just go on a nice evening stroll with each other. Yeah. And I'm so proud of us. We never fought. We never disconnected. Things only got intense at one point, which I do want to share as like an example of what not to do. And sorry, I'm going to pick on you about That's that. Okay. But we used the tools. We had this really difficult conversation that typically would have sent us into a spiral for at least a week. Mm -hmm. You know, historically, we this fight would have been totally. would have been a fight. Yeah, I wouldn't say that was a fight. No, I would say it was a difficult conversation. Um, and so that is the power of using these tools. What we came to the other day was I have pain that this is a need for you. I am frustrated at God that he designed sex to be like a need that mm -hmm. I have to show up for. It can't just be a fun recreational sport. It's not a hobby. And I think that that's where a lot of women miss is because we assume sex is a hobby for our husband. So we're like, ah, no, you just want to get off. You just want to feel good. Like, again, this can go both ways for our wives, you know, for either partner, the one that's desiring sex. We view it as like, no, you don't actually need that. Mm. When it is just as important to our relationship, our marriage relationship, as the emotional connection is. Yeah. You put it a lot better right then than, than you did the other night. Really? Because the other night I, th I was about to make that point. Now I'm scared. <laughs> well, I, I realized for me, showing up sexually was just as difficult and exhausting as asking our husbands to show up emotionally for us if they are not already pre-trained in emotions. Like previously, for you to show up emotionally for me, is that is mentally and emotionally exhausting. It was for you at one point. 
The beginning, yes, it, it really was. And that's, I think, then we need to talk about it on the other podcast. I mean, it was a lot of ups and downs. And I was like, I don't know if I want to do all this. You literally like, I'm not doing this emotional S word. Yeah. <laughs> we don't cuss on this podcast, but um, I would. But yeah, I think I, I'd ask the question like, okay, so what I hear you saying is that like, you just wish that it wasn't a thing. You wish that I didn't have these sexual desires. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that like, you didn't have to show up physically like all the time. And it was just like, and I was like, well, if that was reversed and I would just say the same thing of like, well, I wish you weren't emotional. <laughs> I wish you didn't have yeah. to do, which is n what, not how I feel, but that's the equivalent. And I was like, that's just not the way that we are designed. Yeah. So that's just not an option. Right. So the same way that women are designed emotionally, men are designed physically. And that's just, that's the yin and yang, right? Yeah. Well, Dr. Glenn, he would say that we're both designed for both. Mm. Like women are designed to be emotional yeah. and sexual and men are designed to be emotional and sexual. We're, again, our, we're just rewired along the way. We're retrained along the way. Mm, yeah. And so now I'm 37 and you are 40 and our rewiring is so jacked up that it's easy to be like, well, you're the sexual one and I'm the emotional one. Yeah. And I'll but just, that can change for females and males. Like absolutely. All the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There are plenty of females. I got an email yesterday from a girl who she's like, I want sex more than my husband. That's super, super common. Yeah. But the pain is, is that it's a need and it's something that I have to tune into when I'm in a season of life where I, we had a kid in our bed last night. Like we still have little kids in our house. We are in the balance of the little kids that are waking up in the middle of the night still and the big kids that are staying up way too late. We've been walked in on at least twice by one specific kid. And so in order for us to have sex, we have to stay up even later to have sex until that kid that likes to read finally falls asleep and we have yeah. to go check his bedroom. Wes could just buy a, like a bigger lock <laughs> for the door. But yeah, I don't but think... they're still banging on the door. Yeah, I mean, mentally, you still wouldn't be there. Yeah, because I know they're going to be banging on the door or I'm going to have a kid in my bed in two hours and I have to be up at 7 a.m. Yeah. And I want to be up at 6 a.m. That's difficult because for me, bang on the door all you want to. You can't get in, then like, fine. You know what I mean? Like, let us do our thing. I'll, I'll attend to your needs after. Yes. But for you, it's totally like, there's no way that you could do, like, your mental. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just. It's hard enough to get you to concentrate and not think about all the things you need to do during sex. Absolutely. And I have, and I'm also in a season where I am like emotionally drained right now. We talked about that as well. Walking with Meg and Sky through what we're walking with. I've had so much sadness about that. Mm -hmm. And so to just turn that sadness off and be like, okay, let's like be frisky with each other. Totally. It's really difficult. And so my perspective was, I wish that for this season, you could not view sex as it being about you. As in like that me not pursuing you is nothing to do with Wes. It doesn't mean I don't love you. It doesn't mean I don't desire you. It doesn't mean I'm not attractive to you attracted to you mm -hmm. it just means i am physically and emotionally exhausted <laughs> and that's a switch that is your old trauma when i'm not pursuing you you automatically feel like i don't desire you even though it has nothing to do with you yeah and in an essence if you were like to sum up my feelings of all this yeah i think that i'm just jealous of your mental bandwidth mm. But also, as your husband, as your partner, I understand that there are going to be times where your mind is just completely filled with other things. And this is one of those. Do you know what I mean? And that's okay. Yeah. But of course, even though, this is what I love about the connection codes. Even though that's the truth, right? And I know that your mental energy is in a lot of other things. I still want to be able to express to you the loneliness that I have in that. And that we can move on and I can just process that emotion. Yes. But because of our past trauma, I think when I do express that to you, it's hurtful. And so I think that I wish when you would express it, you could acknowledge both. Mm -hmm. I wish that you could say, T, I know. Is that a part of the will, though? I need to know that. No, like, I need the this process. Is outside of the will. Whenever you're like, okay, we got to go deeper. After the will, you say... T, 
I know that you but have. But I just right? expressed my loneliness because I haven't been like pursued sexually, right? So that's an immediate negative. But for you, I feel like I need to follow that like positive first and then express the like loneliness. You're not hearing me though. Okay. Yes, you would express that when you do the core motion wheel. You would, whatever's firing for you that you're feeling, you would do that. But then if you're wanting to dive deeper into it, like the other night, just acknowledging what I'm also experiencing. And that's what we came to the other night is I have a loss of identity because you're not seeing what all I'm experiencing right now. So if you could say, hey, first, last night was great. Loved having sex with you last night. <laughs> I am experiencing some shame around this, you know, whatever you had said in, in the wheel. Um, but I see you. I see you have a lot right now. And it would mean a lot to me if blank, you know, it, it, whatever that need is, or you may not even need anything and you're just needing to process it. Saying that, like, I actually don't even need anything. I just needed to process it. I think that would be super, super helpful to me in those moments. Mm -hmm. So then I feel seen and understood and you can still express your feelings. Yeah. I think that we could, that could be a joy moment, right? I have joy for you showing up for me. Totally. Even in the times where your mental bandwidth is at capacity. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my shame is that like, I just, I want to pursue you sexually, but when I do and your mental bandwidth is, it's typically like, let's wait till the weekend or something like that. So I have shame in not being that man that's like showing up and like, let me take you right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also the time, most of the time, if you're not ready and mentally okay, then like, you're just not going to, you're going to be like, no, let's wait, you know? Yeah. I hear that. And so in essence, I'm just jealous of the mental, like that 10%, you know what I mean? That I normally have. And right now you don't. And that's okay. I understand we're going to do, that's going to, we're going to ebb and flow through that. Do you know what I mean? This is, this is a long Yes. We're a lifetime here. Yes. And I think that's what I want men and women to both recognize. That in a relationship, you go through so many different seasons. And that's what I've said that recently about the core emotion wheel. What I love about the core emotion wheel is that it teaches us that all of these emotions are firing every single day. And when you're in sadness, sadness doesn't last. Joy will come. Shame, like all of these other things will come. And it's the same with like seasons in your marriage. When you, if it's the husband, are in a hard season, wife, like, don't give up on him immediately. See him. Give him identity. Speak into that. I see you. I see this season is hard. I'm here with you. What do you need? Mm -hmm. Let's process our emotions together. But let him know that you see him and that you're not just going to walk away. And then vice versa. Like right now we are in a season where my emotion, my mental bandwidth is pretty full. And so for you to just hang on and know this season isn't going to last forever. It's going to ebb and flow. Like you were just talking, you went to lunch with a guy who's going through, through a divorce right now. And he was like, I was really depressed. And my wife found somebody else during that time. And it's just, we are going to have those moments. Everybody is, life is going to hit all of us. Mm -hmm. And so it's just creating that space for each other where you can share a language with each other and see each other through those hard seasons. And no, it's not going to last. But how you show up in that season will determine if your spouse is still going to be there at the end of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I just gave up on you when you were in your depression, are you still going to be there when it's over? Yeah. You know, like, no, that's so painful. Women that are going through postpartum right now, like having a baby in those years are brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Men can never understand what that is like. And so to have a partner who's like, I see your exhaustion. Like, I see you. What do you need? Mm -hmm. Now, I do have sadness because I also have th this need. How can I partner with you? Yeah. Where we can both feel seen. That's what it is. Yeah. I do You're getting wanna... emotional. What's happening for you? No, I'm not getting emotional. I just like, that was such our story mm. of 
those postpartum years, having those little babies. And so many people don't recover from that. You know, so many women are in such dark, dark places during that. And the men don't have the education to understand what's happening for her. And it's, I don't blame them at all, but they think it's about them. My wife just doesn't love me anymore. Mm. My wife, she's not there for me. It's all about the kids. So now I'm checking out. I'm out of this mentally and emotionally from her. And that's where the spiral starts. Yeah. And they can wake up 10 years, 20 years down the road, but it can trace back to that season. Yeah. And that's so painful for me. I just know how I look now at photos of me. I saw one yesterday because we just had a kid have a birthday and I had three babies in my lap and you were out of town in this photo. And I was a shell of a person. Shame. shame. And I get that. But like I was a shell and I just I hurt for people so deeply that are in those seasons. And I just want people to know they don't last. But having these tools before you go into it. So you can process it later and not create that damage. Uh, The other thing that we talked about the other night was that we weren't, this was not in the original design, the way society is right now. So you talk about my mental load, my mental capacity right now, running a business and caring for kids and taking care of my friends that are walking through cancer and trying to be all wear all these different hats while making money to afford a mortgage and a car and my kids' art projects that they want us to buy so they can have a magnet on the fridge and yearbooks. Side we note, were, we should just say that like the kids came in from how they saw the trash can this morning was, and I had thrown away some art stuff and they saw it. Oh, he was devastated. And they were like sad. Yeah. You know, I had to, like it was a sense of reality. I had to tell them like, guys, we just, can't keep everything that's actually the example that glenn gives though in the parenting course is throwing away a kid's art it's a loss of identity for yeah. them yeah that's the literal example that he gives so what it was a, an identity loss totally and I, I totally get that um yes but back to um yeah we weren't designed to live like this yeah. god put us in a garden if you believe in god and how creation happened from him We were naked in a garden. We were just supposed to be like having sex and eating good fruit. Like that was the design. We weren't supposed to be living in a capitalistic world Mm. where it's just, I need to make money. And, And so adding all of those things is another way that we have rewired what we were designed to do. So you still have your primitive desires to just have sex and be connected. And now we've thrown a bunch of gunk on top of it and we've made it really polluted. And that is really, really difficult to navigate as a husband and a wife. Yeah. I mean, there are definite times where I'm like, and I know there are for you too. Let's just leave this world, like not this world, but like, let's just leave a home here. What do we do? Go live somewhere in the country and like be, we were, you know, I don't know how I'd make money, but. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. But then we can go back to like actually having space. Like, listen, we still like, this doesn't solve everything, right? The, I don't think the will solves everything, but it is, we are light years ahead of kind of where we were and we know how to speak in these things where like our conflict is minuscule. Which that's not, the goal of the will is not to solve everything. And I think that's where people get messed up is they think that is the goal to solve everything. But the goal is to have a language to communicate about it. So you're not disconnecting. Yeah. And that is exactly what we have got. That's exactly what we do. Yeah. The other night, to have that conversation and not disconnect is massive in our relationship. And that is my hope for people. Totally. Yeah. One thing, that, the last thing kind of I would say that was big on that I remember from the conversation. You were basically saying like, I just wish you could like, we talked a little bit about this earlier, but like, I wish you could just not have these desires. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I wish it wasn't a need. Yeah. And then, you know, we talked about like flipping that around, like, well, do I wish you didn't have emotional desires, you know? And that's one thing like over the years I've worked emotionally on, you know what I mean? Like I've become this person, not this like typical male who doesn't like to talk about emotions and express your feelings and this kind of stuff. Like, yes, that is not, I don't think a, born trait 
for me. I can't say for all males, right? Well, it was born. You were rewired not to. Yeah. I've worked really hard on all that. And so, you know, I can just talk in emotions. Yeah. Thanks to connection codes and kind of what you've taught me a lot of this stuff. But I guess like, I, I don't know where to go from here. Do you know what I mean? I just, I've worked really hard through all of that. You've worked really hard on the physical stuff too. Yeah. And so that just, I guess it hurt me when you said like, I just wish you didn't have these <laughs> desires. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can just like, express that. Mm, I get that. You know? Yeah. Just, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. I hear that. That hurt is valid, but I still, it doesn't change what how I wish yeah. things were. Okay. One more thing that happened the other night that I just want to say is a warning to men or women when you're having a difficult conversation, when you're navigating a difficult conversation with your partner. And that is to not scare the other partner to death. That almost disconnected us hard. We are walking. I am sharing my core emotions with you. In that moment, I was talking about fear. Yeah. And there was a cat sitting outside and Wes decided to scare the cat without warning me. And the I'm sorry. fear flood happened in my brain and it scared me so bad. And I wanted to disengage from you. I did not want to look at you. I did not want to be next to you. In that moment, I was done. Oh, totally. Yeah. I'm so sorry. And so that was also a moment that I had to decide Am I going to go to our old pattern of me just disengaging and flicking you off and cussing at you and saying, I'm done with you right now? Or, because that's how I felt, even thinking about that moment right now, like I can feel my heart rate rate getting up. Or am I going to fight for this moment and not disconnect from you? And I think that couples experience that continuously. There are so many moments that our partner does something and we want to disengage from them because they have hurt us. And it's up to us to decide, am I going to stay in this moment or am I going to leave? That is hard. It is not fun. And I, we have an episode, episode called, I wanted to punish him. I wanted to punish you the other night. And the best punishment is to lose relationship yeah. in that moment. Yeah. And... So I just want to say to anyone, the bad thing about the connection codes, and I've said this before, is that when you know better, you have to do better. And so in that moment, I had to choose to fight for you, Mm -hmm. even when I didn't want to. And I will say as much as I hated doing that because I wanted to punish you, the outcome is so much better. We talked for about 10 more minutes. I processed my anger at you at that moment and you did a good job staying present and not disengaging from me while I was processing because you you could have chosen, okay, well, I'm done now. Yeah. Like, And that's our history too. I feel hurt by you. So I'm angry at you. So now you're going to be angry at me because I'm angry at you. And that is a cycle right there. But you chose to let me process that anger big and hard and you stayed in it. And because we both chose to stay in it, Within 10 minutes, we were inside in our bed watching Parks and Rec. Like, totally fine. If I had chosen to disengage in that moment or you had chosen to disengage in that moment, three days. I bet we would have fought for three days. Yeah, totally. And so making that choice is hard. Making that choice is painful. Oh, I get it. Totally. But it is worth it. That's why sometimes having the physical wheel as a, like a magnet or on the cup or something like that, like... It kind of looks at you and it's like, what you going to do? What you going to do? Buddy? Are you going to make a decision of just like living in this or are you yeah. going to actually process this stuff right yes. now with me? Yeah. And that's tough. There are times where like, yeah, I've, I've literally vividly memory. Uh, I remember times in bed where I'm like, I don't want to do this. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to pull this wheel out and do this with you, but I know that like, it's the best decision. It's the best decision. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry for scaring that cat. I... Yeah, you should be. It was the boy in me that just, <laughs> I yeah. didn't, literally, I didn't even think about it. I didn't think, there wasn't in my mind, like, I wonder how Tira's going to respond to this. She's sharing her feelings with me. Should I do this or not? No, it was just like instinct. Yeah. And it was bad. 
So whenever your partner or spouse is sharing vulnerably with you, do not disengage. Like, do not go to another space because yeah. that will create very deep damage in your relationship. I think the same thing would be answering a call. Yes. Or get picking up your phone. If your partner is sharing with you and you pick up your phone, whew, major loss of identity. Totally. And so before we go into the core emotion wheel ourselves, today's takeaways, I think, are that navigating difficult conversations can be painful. But when you use these tools, it can make a difficult conversation smoother. And also that you are going to go through seasons that one of you is experiencing things that the other person can't see. But when you can give identity to that person and say, hey, I see that you're struggling. What do you need? That can make all of the difference in those seasons. And that also sex is difficult, for a lot of relationships. It is not just yours. It is not just ours. And that these tools can improve that dramatically. But when you have old trauma, that can still get in the way. And so the sooner you can take hold and work on your relationship, the less damage that you're going to create in your future. Yeah. Like, that's it. And so, Wes, will you do the core motion wheel with me? Sure. I feel anger that though it's cloudy today. I want to go fly an airplane. And there's just thunderstorm, so it's not a good thing to do. And literally every day that I'm working this week has been like sunny. Yeah, I get that. Uh, I feel shame for wanting more sex, you know, or desiring, you know, like, I uh, wish I could take some of that desire away. Mm. Yeah. Uh, feel guilt for taking one of our kids to school a little bit later today. Mm -hmm. I think he enjoyed it, but <laughs> just so fear of going to fly today and just uh, got to get the airplane out. Mm -hmm. and it's been its first time since after the some maintenance done, so it's my first time doing that. So mm -hmm. there's a little fear there. Feel lonely in that you and I are just trading off nights. You know, like with sports and everything, we're just mm -hmm. we're passing each other a lot. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Lonely in that. Sad that you're going to be gone this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, hurt. I, I don't know if I hurt right now. Mm. Can you name a big one? Uh, the other night during this conversation, I felt hurt that you said, like, I wish you could just take this away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I wish this wasn't a part of your makeup. Yeah. I feel joy in the way that we're holding these mics and doing the podcast. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's like the cool thing here. Okay. Is it the cool thing? I don't know. I, don't, I doubt it, but... But it's just fun. Yeah. And doing this with you. Thank you. I have anger. Whew, felt it again. Anger that you scared that cat the other night. Just so much anger in that. I have shame that my mental capacity is maxed out. And that I'm not just like this, like sex crazed person, you know, yeah. like I, I can flip that switch off very, very easily yeah. and forget that it exists. <laughs> so I have shame in that. Yeah, I guess I have guilt in that too, because I know what a great partner you are and the work that you have done to emotionally connect. Mm -hmm. and, and so I have guilt that I'm not engaging sexually as often often as you would like. Mm. Um, I have fear. Fear because our cameras are at your video shoot that you're having this week. So we're, I don't know that this is actually recording on the camera if it's stopped or not. So yeah. fear about that. Lonely in, yeah, just all the tasks that we're doing separately, sports and kids stuff and work, just lots of loneliness and all of that. Yeah. Hurt that we created this society as much as I like love to benefit from air conditioning and things like that. I'm um, just hurt that we've built a society where it's just like, we got to get to the next thing mm. and it goes against our like primitive instincts and uh, the way our brains mm. were designed. Mm. Sad that we have 12 years of pain in our relationship that still creep up yeah. occasionally yeah, 
just just sad that we can't just erase all of that. Yeah. And joy, yeah, joy that you're willing to do this with me today, come on the podcast, talk about these hard conversations and that you just partner with me so well. So lots of joy in that and joy that even though our sex is only once or twice a week now, <laughs> it is night and day difference yeah. from what it used to be. Yeah. And so just lots of joy there. Yeah. 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 And so thank you all for listening. I hope that this was connecting for someone out there and um, that you realize that you're not alone in, in what you're experiencing. And that as Dr. Glenn and Phyllis say that we are all pilgrims on the journey and we very much are, but man, we are light years different from where we used to be. Yeah. And I am so, so grateful for that. And so if you're like, okay, I hear you, Tira. I hear you, Wes. Like, I do not want to continue to create damage in our relationships. And let me say, our damage, like, again, we thought we were great. These are just like fights that we were having occasionally, conversations we were having a few times a year but those were really difficult to navigate. It wasn't that we were throwing chairs at each other. like. But that still was creating damage that we we're having to walk through today. Yeah. And so if you're thinking, I want to take hold and stop these cycles that we're in right now so we can live the next 10, 20, 50 years with each other, not creating new obstacles to overcome with each other. Click the link in our show notes and enroll in the foundations course. Get the bundle, foundations and late night. They are transforming couples' lives. I mean, we are getting email after email about how it is just changing marriages, changing families. And you deserve, you are worthy of experiencing that same connection. And we are just so grateful to be a part of of that journey with you. Yeah. And so click the link in our show notes. You can get the core motion wheel, get the foundations course and enroll today and start your own inner work for your relationship. Thank you for being here. And are we going to do it? You, we do all of this because you can be good. Oh, geez. whoa. Uh, you deserve this. You need this. You deserve Let's this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Did I get it? You did good. <laughs>